And I said, I'm going to church. He said, no, not in my house. I said, it's too late. I already started going to church and I'm not going to stop. He said, okay, if you want to go to church, he said, go to so-and-so church where you don't have to take Jesus seriously. I said, that's not possible because I already took him seriously. He felt like it was a joke. Let me give you an history about what my father is. Somebody say amen. When I was 15, my mom said to me, slow down now. Stop going to church. Stop praying the way you are praying. Just be still. When you go to university, you will, t- you will do this Christianity seriously. Guess what? I never went to university in my life. In fact, I never got to jump off. He shocked you, right? He shocked me too. And all of this has happened because I started working with God. Why am I sharing this story with you? Those who will finish well in life must start. Many of you, you have not started your journey with God. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, old, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Everybody say a multitude. The Bible says that in this pool of Bethesda, there were a great company of people who are impotent. There are two powerful words there. Number one is great. Number two is multitude. It says there is a company of great impotent folks. How do people who are great and yet impotent? In other words, it means that out of all of them, Nobody, will, nobody can help anybody. Because it's a company of impotent. All of them are heading the same direction. Nobody can say, oh boy, can I help you? If you are going to finish well in life, the first thing to identify is that have you actually started a journey that you want to finish well? Nobody finish what they have not started. How many of you left your house? You came here. You didn't wake up and saw yourself here. You didn't pray and say, Father, Holy Ghost, drop me in church now. And then you saw yourself in church. What happened? You left your house and then you what? You entered bus or you took Uber or maybe you have your own Jeep or you drive, you drove your own Jew wagon. Just left your house, you know, say, I'm going to church, I'm going to VG. Now, all of this is because you are going somewhere. Police only harass people who are going somewhere. If you are going nowhere, no poli- can a police come and meet you in your house and say, what are you, where are you going? Eh? No. But the trouble here is that all of these people that were a great company, they were not going anywhere. In fact, if they want to go somewhere, it was impossible. My mates were going to club. They were chasing girls. And I said, I'm going to church. He said, no, not in my house. I said, it's too late. I already started going to church and I'm not going to stop. He said, okay, if you want to go to church, he said, go to so-and-so church where you don't have to take Jesus seriously. I said, that's not possible because I already took him seriously. He felt like it was a joke. Let me give you an history about who my father is. My father is a policeman, or was a policeman. Then my father would come one day and said, you can't go to church. I I said, said, sir, what do you mean? I I said, I'm already there. I can't stop. It was like a joke. I went to church, I came back. He warned me, he said, the next time I catch you in church, I thought he was joking. Then I went to church again. This time when I came back from church, I knew that I was ready for war. Tell somebody war. war. So, you know, you know policemen, it's in their blood though, when they want to get something for you, they harass you. 
He said, hey, stop. You can't. I said, I can't stop. So this time I will go to church. When I come back, the man will prepare for me a pot of soup. In that pot is blala. Somebody say blala. That's koboko. Good koboko. And the man will flog me so well. And I ask, ah, why are you flogging me, sir? I have no stolen money. You're only flogging me because I'm going to church. I said, if you are flogging me for going to this church, there must be something in this church. When my father flogs me there, everybody in the barracks, in my block then, they will hear. And they will come and tell me, oh boy, stop going to church. Hey, okay, wait till you enter university. I said, no. I said, there's something about Jesus that if you really test it, many of us, I mean, quite a lot of people still go to church, but they've not really met Jesus. The day you meet Jesus, something about your life will change. Nobody will beg you to come to church. Nobody will beg you to do what is right. No. Nobody will beg you to leave sin and just, no. I met Jesus, and I know I met him. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So, <laughs> this went on for five years. I couldn't leave. How old was I? 13. Five years. So for five years, it felt as though I don't have a father. Why? Because I said I want to go to church. There was a particular night I had to go to night vigil. So I did a caricature of um, clothes and I stuck the clothes with clothes to look like a human being and I covered it with clothes. And I came back at midnight, you know, like nothing went. Right. And I tried it again, but this time he knew I went to church. So the following morning, it was not funny. As I woke up like this, my hand was handcuffed. <laughs> what are we saying? Is it not this church thing? <laughs> I handcuffed in my hand, and then to, I handcuffed me, and then put the handcuff to a door. <laughs> when I was telling my son some of these things, he said to me, your dad is cruel. I said, oh boy, <laughs> that's the reality for me going to church. And then, he w- when, he, when he put the anchor there and put it to an iron door, he went to sleep. When he woke up, he just took the koboko. Because when you are, high, when you are anchored, where would you want to run to? Your hand is limited. You can only run like this. You run, your leg will go like this. Somebody say amen. Why am I sharing this story with you? Those who will finish well in life must start Many of you, you have not started your journey with God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Many of you have not what? Now, don't mix this. Everybody say amen. Don't do what? Starting your journey with God is not the same thing as coming to church. It's not what? It's not the same thing. And you are not too young to start working with God. In fact, when I was... 17 years old, when I was 16 years old, I had known what it means to pray for 12 hours at a stretch. I didn't say I pray and sleep small and say I'm still praying. And there was no phone then. In fact, by the time I was 14, I had read the Bible complete from beginning to the end. I, I was just reading five chapters every day and I had finished. Let me say this thing. You cannot progress in life if you are in the company of those who are not making progress. Did you hear me? Many of you here, the trouble you are having is not because God does not have good plans for you. It's because when you come to church, you hear something good. When you leave church, they have there is a company of impotent folks who are waiting to destroy what you have heard. What's the first thing I say? Come on, what's the first thing I say? Come on, what's the first thing I've said? Huh? Start your walk with God. I didn't tell you. This one will shock you. Somebody say amen. When I was 15, my mom said to me, Slow down now. Stop going to church. 
Stop praying the way you are praying. Just be still. When you go to university, you will, t- you will do this Christianity seriously. Guess what? I never went to university in my life. In fact, I never bought the jam for till today. Ah, it shocked you, right? It shocked me too. And all of this has happened because I started working with God. My brother, this thing, when we say work with God, work with God, is real. And I'm a living example. That a man, somebody say amen. That a man can actually walk with God. That not just an old man. Most of you think that, hey, you know, I'm still young. I want to enjoy my life. I want to, I want to do hip hop. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying don't enjoy your life, okay? Enjoy it to the best you can. Most of you are just saying, ah, no. You know, it's only when we are in church we should serve God. Once we are out of church, let's do what they are doing. You don't understand what you are missing. You can only finish well in this life if you start working with God. And what's the first point again? Come on, what's the first point again? Start your journey with God. How do you start your journey with God? Look at what he says. He says, for, a, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. He said, then whosoever then first, first after troubling the water stepped in was made whole of the disease that they had. Now, look at verse 5. And a certain man, somebody say a certain man. Now, don't forget that Everybody in that place were helpless. Everybody are what? They are helpless. What does it mean to be helpless? And there are many of you here, somebody say amen. You feel very helpless. There are some of you here, what you are dealing with is not because you want to deal with it. It's because you just feel helpless about it. And this helplessness comes in so many cases. For some, it's girls. They just feel helpless when they see a girl. When the girl walks past like this, everything that is doing them finish. For some, it's money. When they see money like this, their body begins to boil as though the money will not finish. That's why many young people are into fraud. For many of you here, or for some of you, there is that feeling of helplessness. Somebody here is saying, "Eh, Pastor, you don't understand. You say we should walk with God, but it's not easy. Things are hard. You know, I I, I will show you something in the scripture. Somebody say amen. amen. Many of you are feeling overwhelmed. David said in Psalm 68, verse 2, he said, Lord, he said, he said, when when I am overwhelmed, he said, lead me to a to a mountain, to a place that is higher than myself. For many of you tonight, you are overwhelmed by your life. You are overwhelmed by the father. You don't even have money. For some, you are overwhelmed because you can't pay your school fee. For some of you, you are so overwhelmed with the burdens of life that you feel so helpless. And that's what the Bible says, that all of them here, they felt what? Helpless. Say, I am not helpless. What happened again? It said, and there was a certain man which had an infirmity. Everybody listen very carefully. He said this man had been there for how many years? 38. 38 years is enough to do a lot of things. 38 years. And the Bible says that one man had been at a spot for 38 years. Why? Because he is in the company of those who are going nowhere. My brother... If you are going to move your life forward, the people that you associate with matters. You can't associate with people who are going nowhere and expect to be somewhere. Can somebody write that down? What did I just say now? And expect to be somewhere. This man, he was there for 38 years. Most of you, 
you have been at a spot in your life because every time you wake up, the only person that encourages you is the person who is also, it's like somebody who, let's say you are married, for instance, and you are going through, most of you don't know that marriage is trouble. The even Bible says it that those who will get married will have trouble. It's in the Bible. The day I saw it in the Bible, I said, thank God, I have a, I have a place to console myself. So whenever I go to trouble in marriage, I look at the Bible. The Bible says there will be trouble, so I don't. If you are going through trouble in marriage, and the only person who is encouraging you, or the only person who you are talking to, is the person who is also going through trouble but has given up. What would you, what would you do? You want to give up. You'll be helpless. If you are going, if, if you are going through um, thoughts of leaving your marriage, and you know what? Most married people have dealt with the thought of leaving. Most, but they get up and say like, I'm not doing it again, I'm tired. <laughs> Boy, I'm a lot. Come on, baby. You are not, okay, me, I want to go. But if the only friends you have are the ones who have packed their load and gone, when you go and meet them and say, yeah, I'm going to this thing, what would they tell you? Oh yeah, come and go. But what if you go and meet somebody who has been married for 40 years and you have just been married for five years? What will happen? The person will tell you, just endure. But me, I will say, if a man is beating you, don't endure. And you may not, yeah, I don't mean divorce, but anyway, that's not for today. Somebody say amen. So this man was in this case because he found himself, when he found himself in the company of those who are going nowhere. When Jesus saw him, and knew he had been, and knew he had now been a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made old? I want to share a very important point for you if you must end well in life. Look at that. What did the man say? The impotent man answered him. He said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. What is that saying? He excused. Excuse, somebody say excuse. excuse. Can somebody say, say excuse? excuse? Let me tell you something. You will always have an excuse not to do what is right. Eh? Come on, can I, can I say it again? Can I say it again? You will always have an excuse not to do what is right. But those that will end well in life are those who don't take excuse. The only reason why you just carry that sister and say, don't worry, nobody is here now. Let's just go, quick, quick, I got excuse. Until you stop giving excuse, you don't go forward. Can I say that again? Until what? You have to, you, see, how many of you want to go forward in your life? Let me see your hand up. Can you jump and shout hallelujah? Jump, jump. Sit down, sit down. How many of you really want to go forward in your life? Like, take for instance, I, I was talking about that lady who sings, for instance. So let's say she has a beautiful idea of a beautiful song. Do you know that she can give herself excuse not to go to the studio and say, well, I don't have money, and I don't have anybody who can help me. And I ask you, have you, talked to, have you spoken to 1,000 people to help you? People who make excuses don't make progress. Can I say it again? People who do what? Don't make progress. What excuse are you making right now? For that thing that has kept you in that place, what excuse are you making? The next thing, and I'll, and I'll round up. Then Jesus said unto him, Rise up and walk. Quick things you must do if you must end very well in life. You will not start your walk with God until you stop giving excuses. The reason why you are not a serious Christian, why you are only a Christian in church, and when you are outside, you will do what they are doing. You will drink, you will, you will carry girls, you will behave like a low, you will behave like someone who doesn't even go to church at all. You will behave like someone who doesn't even have a white garment. When you have a white garment, you should have an inner white garment. In fact, the inner one is better. I have the inner one now. Not, um, you can't see it unless you have spiritual eyes. Somebody say amen. amen. You can't start working with God if you are giving excuse. Why are you not born again? 
It's not easy or ah, to be born again. Go easy or ah. In this world, once you go out like this, once you are in church, you are holy. Once you step out, boom, and one girl, one girl just passed by and you did like this. It's like, hey, Jesus. <laughs> and some of you here, you date one girl. You have not finished with her. You say another one, ah, I love you again. That one, you are still there. Say another one, I love you again. You are still there. So, by the time we check your phone, you have Sister A, this one, you met her in church. Sister B, you met her in school. Sister C, and every day, you are sending all of them the charge card. See your destiny. <laughs> and what about the girls, too? A man meets you and say, ah, I love you. I, I, mean, I mean, since I set my eyes on you, I have not been able to sleep. And, and your heart starts... Your, your heart start beating, bim, bim, bim. And you say, okay. He say, what do you want? He say, I love you. Will you love me back? He say, yes, I will love you back. Part one, here. You know. Then as you are going again, and that brother walk up to you again. He say, ah, sister, how are you? He say, I'm fine. How are you doing? He say, the Lord is good. He say, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, hallelujah. He say, he say you know, when I saw you last week, I thought I saw an angel. I didn't know you were a human being. And that one asked me your number. The next day, you chat, 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 oh, because you don't have work, you don't have book, you will chat, 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 oh. When you don't know what to say again, you start saying, I love you, and you don't, you are, your head starts screaming. You know it's useless to chat for a long time. When you chat, somebody say amen. amen. When you chat, eh, chat for a bit and finish it. Go and do something else. Go and read your book. Go and think about how you will make money. Lagos is not smiling now. The environment is tough now. Not in a bad life, but you will survive. Somebody say, I will survive. I will survive. Oh, so you think you will survive by chatting. Just chat, chat, chat. No book reading, no. You are not saving. You are spending all the money chatting. Data finish. <laughs> Please send me some. Some for me. I'm chatting with this girl. Useless chat. Some chats are taking you to hellfire. Some chats are not, it's not making, it's not. So, the, so you chat, to, and then, you date second brother. By the time the month has gone, seven brothers have said to you, I love you. And you have said, brother one, love one, love two, love three, love... And you alone! Hey, fire. Somebody say fire. Fire! <laughs> it's not only in the world, though. In the church, people do these things. There are some gifts in your life that will not come out unless you start looking for someone that will train you. Stop looking for people that will just give you money without training you. Look for where you can learn. When you are young, the age of the youth is the age of learning. It's not the age of earning. Like, I mean, you should earn also. But the age of this youth is more focused on learning because it is what you learn that will produce results for you in the future. Ah, my brother, I learned to... I did what? I learned. So I'm a creative person and I do graphics. One time I had learned graphics very well. I was tired of it. So I went to learn cinematography. Ah, what are you doing, sir? I didn't have time. Oh, so what I would do is that when I get back home at night, I will stay awake from 11 to 1 to take online classes. And I will pay in dollars. <laughs> and that thing went on for a while. One day somebody called me. Sir, I know you did cinematography. Can you help us do something to just come and help them direct something? Okay, do it this way, do it that way. Put it on, put it down. I said, how much? I said, pay me 1.5 million. He said, okay, no problem, we'll pay you. In few minutes, oh. Yeah, he said, but that did, it didn't happen. I was over 40 then anyway. I'm more than 40 now. It didn't happen then. I had learned, today I can come into a place and see, maybe you want to shoot a movie or do something. I can say, okay, ah, do this, do this, do that. And you get results. You say, you say, ah, how? I learned. If you don't subject yourself to training when you are young, when you are old, you will cry. See that soap making, how to make soap, how to barb hair. There is no useless trade. There is no useless labor. Organizer, pump tire. And I say to people, do you know how many tires are in Lagos? Millions of tires every day. 
I say, you say you want to be a banker, and God is giving you an idea of a shoemaker. You say, no, me, shoemaker, God forbid. Eh, hey, banker, no. Hey, there are many bankers who are in debt, too. There are shoemakers who are not in debt. The world has 7.8 billion people. All of them are wearing shoes. Submit yourself to training. See that your voice. Go and look for someone to train you. You know those great singers? If you have an idea, the kind of training that they go through, you will say, ah, is this? You only hear of the good things. But there are some things they cannot eat. There are some places they cannot go because they want to train themselves. That small gift, that's how to end. This is a journey. That small gift you have, I just looking like, uh, go and train it. You like baking cake, but now when you bake cake, we only eat black shadow. <laughs> but, but, amen. But you like baking. But it's just that when you bake now, you are baking shadow. Go and meet somebody who can bake and say, Ah, Ejo, Eko Minkini, Ela Milo, yeah. Show me the way. How are you baking? You like cooking. But when you fry plantain, we only eat black plantain. <laughs> Now, it is not because you are a bad person or because you are a dullard. It's because you just need someone to train that gift. You can play football, but you sleep 12 hours a day. How are you going to get to Chelsea? And uh, how are you going to become Ronaldo? Do you know how Ronaldo trains? He wakes up in the morning, he trains all night. He trains for hours. And you just wake up one morning, just jog, say, say, and just jog. You are not useless. You are only untrained. Confess the word of God regularly. Do you know that the word of God can help you a lot in your life? What did I say? What did I say? The word of God can do what? Can help you a lot. If you don't confess the word of God, you will keep struggling with your flesh. That excuse you are always giving, the only way to overcome that excuse is to confess the word of God. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. So see that struggle for sin. Eh? It's not only you, it's everybody. A man may be so anointed when he talks, fire is falling. But if he does not confess that word regularly, he will fall victim. By regularly confessing what the word of God says, you reduce your chance of falling into sin regularly. And the more you fall in sin, the more it weakens you on your journey in life. These are things that actually hinders you from finishing very well. Finally, is what now? Take action. Today is the best day to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Say after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me and the third day he rose up for my salvation. I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We believe that the words you've heard will make a tremendous impact in your life. To partner volunteer or co-host an outreach with us please call the numbers below you can also like share and follow our channels god bless you